Welcome to our Palo Alto Networks Best Practice Series. I'm Lars and I'm the Technical Director of Consigas. We are a consultancy company specialized on Palo Alto Networks and I would like to share with you some of the best practices which we have developed over the last six years working with Palo Alto Networks. In this particular video, we will talk about how to migrate an existing legacy firewall to a Palo Alto Networks next generation firewall. If you think that this is interesting and would like to learn more, then I can highly recommend you to join one of our trainings. Alternative you can get in contact with us if you would like one of our engineers to help you. We are able to provide remote and on-site services all around Europe. So now let's have a look on how can we actually migrate a firewall. And there are actually two things what I want to look at you with. Um, first of all, the migration strategies. What is the best approach on how to migrate uh, your firewall, right? And secondly, I would also like to give you an overview on the Palo Alto Networks migration tool, which is kind of a very kind of essential tool and going to make the job of migra migrating the firewall uh, significantly easier. Right. So when we look at the migration strategy, what is the best way? The first thing, um, what we need to do is actually analyze our existing firewall configuration to see what are kind of the different configuration elements are there that we need to migrate over. Right. Usually we kind of differentiate kind of four main groups. Right. So the first one uh, would be internet outbound. Okay, so internet outbound effectively is, you know, all of your internal clients inside of your internal network uh, accessing the internet. So basically, effectively, internet access. Okay, so um, the configuration elements we need to migrate here are, first of all, our security policy. Right, so kind of all of the rules what we have on our existing firewall, right? And then the second element is NAT, or more particular here, it is source NAT. So effectively, you know, translating all of the uh, internal IP address to a public IP address on the outside so that you can communicate with the internet. To be honest, internet outbound, that's probably the most simple job. Um, it's, the, it's the one where most people are afraid of because they know, oh, I have kind of hundreds of rules on my firewall and thousands of objects. So this is going to be a big job. However, you know, using the migration tool, which I'm going to show you later, that's actually probably one of the most easier ones. OK, um, the second one we need to look at is Internet inbound. OK, Internet inbound, meaning let's say here kind of to your firewall, you have uh, a DMZ connected, right? Let's say with a, a web server. And this web server is reachable from the Internet. Okay, so again, here the kind of the two elements where we need to migrate as first of all, again, security policy, basically allowing access from the internet to your internal web server. And the second thing is also NAT, but in this case, being destination NAT. Now, here with the destination NAT, um, it's getting a little bit more complex, okay, because depending on kind of what firewall you have at the moment, um, the different vendors do NAT in a different way. Again, it's something which we can also automate using the migration tool. However, these are rules which you probably you know, need to kind of check manually to make sure that they're really doing uh, what you want them um, to do. Okay, so again, this is something where we need to be a little bit more careful with. Okay, good. So then <coughs> the third service where we also need to migrate, kind of what we have on most firewalls, are site-to-site -site VPNs. So on side to side VPNs, you know, just imagine you have, let's say, kind of another third party company you're working with, right, who has kind of their firewall and you have basically effectively kind of just, you know, a VPN tunnel established uh, to them. OK, so all of these VPN tunnels, uh, we also need to migrate. Now, this VPN tunnels um, in general also shouldn't be a big deal. Right, because IPsec as a standard is out there for a very long time, um, uh, and usually kind of you know there are not no kind of big intercompatibility issues uh, between you know firewalls. Right. However, you know whenever we kind of if you kind of established a VPN before you to our third party, you probably have run into problems. And what are the problems here? Usually is the configuration. Right, because in IPsec VPNs we have such a kind of big variety of uh, configuration options that this is usually kind of what is causing uh, a lot of the interruption. Right, and here we want to be sure that whatever settings you have on your existing firewall, we kind of migrate the right settings over to uh, your new next generation firewall. The one where you might have challenges is the password, the pre-shared key. Right, most VPN tunnels you know use pre-shared keys. Right, if you do not know the password, well. Depending on the firewall you have, I mean, there is, you know, usually Checkpoint and Cisco 
there you can recover uh, the the PGChat key, the password from the configuration. So there you're you're, you're fine, right? Other vendors like Juniper, um, it is more difficult because you cannot recover, right? And then if you didn't write down the PGChat key, and you, or let's say, or even if you're not sure if it is correct, right? What you should simply do is uh, reset it and reset it before you do the migration, right? So basically, on your existing old firewall, reset the password. Obviously, you know you need the other side, the other guy, um, to reset it on their side as well then re-establish VPNs kind of make it to make sure that you, you definitely have the right password right and that the VPN tunnel is still working okay so and then the fourth service is our remote access VPN now the remote access VPN um, that's obviously you know let's say you have you know uh, users out and about there can be so parties there can be your own employees and they're kind of establishing kind of VPN tunnel into internal network, all right? So kind of classical remote access. Now, um, remote access is potentially the most tricky one uh, to migrate, okay? Simply because here vendors just do it in a different way, right? Um, if you look at the other services, like, you know, security policy. Security policy always compromises of a source IP, destination IP, a service or a port, right? That's what all firewalls, firewall vendors more or less do in the same way, right? So that's the service which we can, you know, one by one migrate over to the next generation firewall. Again, also destination nut, you know, while destination nut might be con configured in a different way, right? It's still, you know, it's doing a particular thing and this we can kind of mirror as well. Also not a problem, right? And also IPsec VPNs pretty straightforward. Now, on remote access VPNs, there we have a difference because most vendors simply have their own solution. Right, their own kind of remote access client, what they use. So with this, you know, you cannot just kind of migrate it over one by one. The only exception being, you know, if you still have kind of an old Cisco VPN, let's say kind of Cisco ASA firewall, with one of these old Cisco IPsec VPN clients. And now I'm not talking about the newer kind of any connect, really kind of the old, uh, the old one, right? Um, um, which is using kind of a classical uh, kind of sort of party VPN scheme, right? So if you have one of these, actually you can actually use this uh, together with the next generation firewall. And we have customers who actually migrated over 300 users over, right? Uh, and actually these users are still using their old Cisco VPN client, okay? Unfortunately, <laughs> it is working so well that after three years, kind of a couple of these users are still using it, okay? So again, this is something also if you have, let's say, if you're connecting using sort of party VPN tunnels like, like Shrew for Windows or a VPNC for Linux, right? Kind of again, these kind of uh, sort of party VPN connections um, using X auth, right? Um, this is also supported by the next generation firewall. So again, these ones we can just migrate over one by one. This usually should be not be a problem. All others, right? There we would need to see if we can say kind of migrate them over first um, or uh, um, just leave them on the existing firewall. So that's kind of something where we're always on a particular basis. We need to see what is the best approach to it, right? All other services, again, should be quite straightforward. Okay, so now that you have kind of a good understanding of what you have configured on the existing firewall, now we need to kind of to go to the step where we want to kind of, you know, do the migration. And from a migration strategy point of view, right, what we are always recommending, again, we we're doing this now for the last six years, right, so we have done quite a lot of migrations, right, and um, with the exception of some rare cases, right, the majority of immigrations what we have done is a methodology what we call the like-for-like -like migration. Right, like for like migration, meaning that you basically simply you take your uh, next generation firewall, right? You basically put it in parallel to your existing firewall, right? And now you're basically migrating all of these services, your rule base, your objects, the policies, NAT, all of this kind of good stuff. You migrate this over and fully configure your firewall here, right? So in the first step, what you would do is, uh, you know, just connect it to internet network. Remember, on uh, the Palo Alto Networks firewall, you have a dedicated data plane and management plane, right? So the first thing what you would do is simply connect just the management port to your internal network, right? So with a dedicated IP address just to access management. And now you can do things like, you know, initial configuration, configure kind of install licenses, do software upgrades, um, do the initial configuration of all of the interfaces, right? So let's say here you have an inbound and outbound interface, so the same you would then uh, set up over here as well, inbound, outbound interface, you connect maybe, you know, virtual router to configure your routing, right? Um, then also things like, you know, your, your zones, right? You would con configure as well as your security policy, right? So 
Again, what you do is, you know, exactly, you try to mirror exactly uh, what your existing firewall is doing onto the next generation firewall, right? Obviously, with the next generation firewall, we can do a lot of more things what you can do with existing firewall. But in the first step, the only thing what we're trying to achieve is to do exactly the same, right? And the main reason for this is it simply makes our migration, right, way more easier and, and especially kind of reduces the risk, uh, involved with the migration itself. Okay, the firewall usually is kind of one of the most critical elements in your network, right? Because if it's down, you don't have internet access, and a lot of your services are not working, right? So it is it is very critical, right? So with this, uh, a firewall migration always is a high risk project. So here we will also want to take always want to take an approach uh, which is kind of you know reduces the risk of the migration, right? So with this like for like migration approach, right? What we then do basically at day X when you do the migration, right? Again, you have your firewall, your next generation firewall here doing exactly the same like your old so this means what you just have to do now is you just disconnect the cables from your old firewall okay take this cable and connect it into your new next generation firewall okay Bang. so now you know all the services everything is running over the new firewall and now you can simply test Right. So, and the beauty of this is really, again, we reduce the risk. First of all, you know, we, we take our time to proper prepare the configuration, make sure everything is correct. Right. Um, now, you probably not be able to do everything 100 percent. Right. There might be, you know, little things here and there which which don't work. Right. But that's kind of why what you want to do is always prepare a very good test plan. Right. So one of the major preparation tasks for yourself for the day X, for the immigration day, is that you prepare a good test plan, right, which you first of all run before the migration to make sure everything works. And then you run exactly the same tests again after the migration, right, just after you basically uh, plugged in the cables and um, to make sure everything basically works as it was working before. OK, so because now with this, right, if you then figure out, OK, something isn't working, OK, even let's say everything is working and let's say on Monday morning some business critical application which you were not able to test are now not working anymore, right? The beauty of this migration strategy is that you're always able to roll back in a very easy and simple task, right? Because you just take the cables and plug them back into your old firewall, right? And you're back to normal, back to what you were before, right? So this is kind of the, the main reason why this is... Uh, so kind of simple and reduces the risk because you can always roll back, right? Doing the immigration itself, you figure out that things don't work as they should, or even at a later stage, right? You can always just bring back the cables and, and do it, right? And the reason is that you're not changing anything else, right? You're not changing anything on the internet connection, in the internal LAN, right? The only thing you change is your firewall, right? And with this, if there's anything not working, right, you can focus on one thing. Right. Often what we have, you know, kind of where people say, oh, yeah, we want to migrate services one by one. This is a very complicated task. You know, you, you don't you don't really make your life easy doing this. Um, and if there are problems, right, often, you know, you change something in your network and then change something on the firewall at the same time. And then you don't really know kind of where is the problem. You might be troubleshoot the firewall, but then the problem actually was was a simple configuration issue on the network. Right. So that's why, again, from an immigration point of view, you want to make it keep it simple. Right. And just do kind of a like for like uh, migration. Now, one little caveat, what I want to show you as well, uh, kind of one problem we usually always fall into uh, when we do these migrations, is you kind of connect your firewall. Okay, so now from a communication point of view, all the communication goes over the new firewall. Um, if you connect these interfaces here of the firewall, the firewall will do it. Will send a Gradius ARP to the upstream router. Right, and with this, the ARP table on this upstream router will be updated. So that's fine, perfect. What will not be updated are the ARP table for destination net entries. So let's say you have some additional public IP addresses which you're kind of hosting on uh, on, on your firewall with using destination net, right? So where the IP addresses which are not, you know, configured on the interface itself, but for which you the firewall was was, was doing some proxy ARP um, for just to do destination net, right? These ARP entries will not be updated. Uh, in your on, in your upstream router, right? So always here, you either you have access to the router and just reboot it or clear the app table, right? That's kind of one thing, or the other one, right? If you do not have access to this router, uh, like kind of one, uh, you know, a little trick as well as on the next generation firewall, you also have a command called test arp gradius. 
Okay, so with this you basically say, okay, interface, Ethernet 1.1, let's say that's my outside interface, and then you say IP, and then you basically say, tell the firewall, send out a gratis ARP for this particular IP. So for instance, you know, 172.16.1.9, right? And with this it would now send a gratis ARP, right, for this IP address out to the upstream router, updating its ARP table, right? You can basically now send these gratis ARP entries for all of the IP, address, IP addresses for which you do a uh, destination at, right? And with this, you update the upstream router, right? That's kind of something uh, where people often have a lot of problems, causing a lot of headaches, right? So kind of a little trick here as well uh, to make your life a little bit uh, more easy, okay? So again, just to summarize, right? The first thing what you want to do is analyze your configuration of your existing firewall and then determine what services you actually need to migrate over. Okay? So obviously, you know, security rule base, you know, uh, and NAT. Um, usually kind of always if you kind of uh, segregate this into the different services, right, this kind of, you know, helps you kind of to analyze your configuration. Um, it also helps you to write your test plan, okay? Just kind of to categorize it and, and make, make groups, right? So again, internet outbound, Kind of security policy and source nut, and then the inbound again security policy and destination nut, then side to side VPNs um, and remote access VPNs. And especially remote access VPN, that's something where you need to be careful to see, you know, if you can do this, right? And then from a migration strategy point of view, what you want to do is a like for like migration, right? So you want to prepare your new next generation firewall um, to do exactly what your old firewall was has done before, right? Because with this, you're able to at the day X migration day just move over the cables run your test plan, make sure that everything works as it was working before, right? And then happy days, right? So with this then, you know, you, then later on a later stage, then you can, you know, go and clean up your configuration and things like this, right? Um, and to be honest, configuration cleanup is something what often I get from customers. Oh yeah, you know, I would like to just clean up the configuration beforehand on my existing firewall. Don't do it, right? Um, the, the management of your next generation firewall is much better to do this kind of stuff, right? The only thing what I would recommend you to do beforehand is to delete unused rules, right? So if you have an existing firewall which tells you what rules were not used for a long period of time, you know, getting rid of these rules, this would be a kind of a good exercise, go to clean up because, you know, we can do this on the next generation firewall as well, but usually it means that we have to wait for a certain amount of time, like three, six months, uh, until we are kind of confident, okay, you know, these rules didn't match and then we can delete them, okay? So again, that's the only cleanup rule what I would recommend to do beforehand.